Tonight, uh, we've got myself, uh, GMS Engagement Lead on the call. We've got Mark Saltmarsh, our uh, National Pipeline uh, Manager for Education and Age Grade. And we have Tom Donnelly, our Product Manager, on the call as well. So good mix of us on the call tonight. And we're looking forward to giving you a bit of an update. And we've got a special guest from uh, one of our clubs uh, uh, across uh, uh, the country, uh, and she's looking forward to uh, sharing a bit of uh, good practice on affiliation so far. So look forward to seeing her, and I'll uh, allow her to be introduced uh, a bit later on in the session. So if we're all ready, there's a lot of, there's a fair few just still trickling through, just going to enter a couple more people. If you want to pop in the chat uh, where you're from, say hello to Chloe, that's awesome. We just keep our mics on, on mute. Uh, welcome, Robert. Thanks for joining us. Um, and I will hand over now to Mark Saltmarsh. Great. Thanks very much, Ian. Hi, everyone. Yeah, please do pop your uh, your club and um, and details in the chat. It'd be good to know who we've got on and which clubs are uh, what spread we've got from around the country, which is great. Um, thanks very much, Ian, for, for pulling everything together. What I'm going to do is just give us a, a quick update to start with, a uh, bit of progress for you on where we've been. Uh, and then, as Ian said, we'll have a, an example from, from one of our clubs as well. Um, so, so very quickly, just uh, in terms of our update, we've made some really good progress um, and, and you guys particularly have made some really good progress since we went live on the 1st of July um, with affiliation for 2022-23. Um, really good sort of team effort again across the country. We've had over 22,000 um, age grade affiliations already, which isn't bad in 20 days, um, getting over 1,000 a day on average. That's good. Um, so well done on that. Um, and that was since our GMS switch on of the new season. Of course, the, the season officially... Um, from a regulation perspective, starts on the 1st of August and then our playing season in September. Um, that, that number of 22,000, majority of those are renewals, um, around sort of 18,000 of those are renewals. Um, and then we, we have got another 4,000 of, of brand new affiliations, which is great, which shows that, you know, this opportunity that we wanted to provide that you asked us for as clubs for getting going early in terms of the, the, some of the administrative processes, we've seen clubs buying into that. Um, and parents buying into to that and processing their um, affiliations as well. So, so really good stuff on that and really good to be able to, to report that, that things have moved really quickly and, and this July window is definitely helping people get ahead of the game. Um, just as I said earlier, reminder that, that August and September are sort of two next stages on, on ready for the new season. Um, the regulations switch over to 2022-23, happens on the 1st of August. And that's when, you know, your, your under 10s will also move up to their under 11s. Our new girls age bands will formally start at under 12, 14, 16, 18, et cetera, et cetera. So that so the 2022-23 regulations start then um, in that sort of pre-season period. And then, of course, from September, September the 3rd, uh, Saturday the 3rd is the, the official start of the playing season. So that's when um, you can start matches, etc., cetera, um, and get everyone back to, to, um, to doing things in the clubs on a, on a fixture basis as well. Um, Feedback-wise has, has been good. We've, we've made a number of uh, updates and, and been releases to, to improve the experience for everyone involved on GMS. And Chloe will talk through those in, in a bit more detail in a second. Um, but the feedback has been good, both from clubs and, and parent users as well. Um, we've put some extra resource in, in place in the help desk to try and help field those uh, issues as well as we all try and get you know uh, flatten the hump if you like when we get to September um, and we want to be really ready for that that you know large volume of affiliations that we'll get at that point and use of GMS as well so trying to make sure we've got the right things in place as well. Um, we, we've we now started uh, obviously to to look at 22-23 from a regulation point of view and we thought it was a chance just to quickly outline and remind everyone that Affiliation is a regulation. It's there in Regulation 15. That's all being confirmed now and, and starts, as I say, from the 1st of August. Um, and affiliation of all age grade players is, you know, is what the um, regulation says. That remains as, as per the last two seasons, the uh, last three seasons, sorry. Um, and the reason we have that regulation, you know, it's the responsibility 
of, of any organisation working with children and young people to, to register those young people from an activity perspective and a safeguarding perspective. Um, and we as a national governing body of sport have that, that expectation as well uh, on us in terms of knowing who's playing what, what our participation base is. Um, and that information enables us, just as it enables you to be able to think about where do you need to um, look at putting your resource, um, where do you need to focus your attention, where there might be some issues around participation uh, and planning and those sorts of things as well. Um, and of course, from a, a data security perspective, which increasingly is becoming something we all have to keep an eye on, it, it makes sense for us to have a single online system. You know, that's the most appropriate way to look at that, and that's why... We have GMS um, and we make that available to, to clubs and to players to be able to register on it. Um, obviously, password protected and levels of access for those individuals who are going to be using it as well. Um, just to reiterate, you know, it, it is regulation, um, just as playing out of age grade, the, the season dates, all those sorts of things are regulation as well. Um, and there is, an, therefore, an expectation on everyone in the game to make sure they are um, in line with that regulation as well. And just as we are tonight, we'll continue to help clubs to do that. Um, we'll continue to identify and work with clubs that are clearly struggling or aren't doing that and, and work with them to be able to be in line with regulation so there's no issues on that front. Um, and that just leads on to the last point, really, that the help and support that, that we're providing um, is all there for you. And a number of you are using the, the uh, help portal. Um, and the support of these sessions, recording them, getting them out there and making sure that we've got as much in place as possible to guide people through the affiliation process is what, what we're about doing. Um, so your feedback on that would be would be great as well. Um, I'm just going to hand back to Ian, who's going to talk through um, some additional uh, um, incentive that we've got to be able to, to crack on with affiliation this season as well. Mark. So, uh, yeah, really excitingly, a couple of uh, incentives that we've got. Um, you'll see there on the screen, uh, we've got a tra winner training session for your club with a, a rugby legend. And we've got uh, some Umbro vouchers uh, as well uh, to access to purchase Umbro items. Um, and the mechanism uh, for, for that, so there'll be five prizes in, in total. Um, so five prizes in total and, uh, you know, pretty, pretty good, uh, good prizes. And if clubs uh, age grade affiliation numbers are matched or improved from last season, 2021, 2022, then you'll be entered into a draw to to uh, win those prizes. So pretty exciting to be able to, to have that. And uh, hopefully uh, that will uh, encourage you uh, and uh, entice you to encourage people at your club to affiliate as well so. cheers Mike. thanks very much ian that's great so so a bit of incentive for for everybody as well um and also a chance for us to thank people in a in a good way as well um we can have a quick look at one of our clubs so delighted to be joined by sophia spencer uh, sophia is the data officer at farnham rugby club um in surrey um and already farnham uh, in the, the short time since the 1st of July, um, down to Sophia and some really good teamwork in the club, which we'll talk about in a second, um, have managed to re-affiliate over 500 players. Um, so really a, a key uh, focus for the club, clearly, to try and get ahead of the game in this summer. So, Sophia, thanks very much for joining us. Good to hey, see Mark, you. That's, that's great. It's lovely to be here. Good. Um, it's good to hear that as well. Um, so, Sophia, just um, just a couple of things to share with with everyone um, on the call. So, you've clearly got people to buy in and, and parents to buy into the process. What have you done to to promote that at Farnham and, and get people to, to you know see this as part of what what they need and want to do? Um, so it's a really multifaceted approach. And I would just say, just to give you a bit of context, Farnham's a fairly big club. So we've got approximately. Me, 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 850 mini junior players and yeah. each if you include like the most age groups have about 60 kids in it and each admin has taken a slightly different approach to how they've done it right. so 
they and it, and actually the ones who've been a bit more hardline with their parents have got it done quicker and faster than the ones who've who've been a bit more friendly if I'm really honest okay but both they've gone they the main things that we have all pointed out to all the parents is to say one it's a point of compliance like you literally have to do it as you said it's a regulation and the people who've made the kid, the parents crack on with it fastest have just said to them which I haven't done in my age group but other people have really effectively and said if you don't do it you are not allowed to play your child will not be allowed to train they will not play matches if they turn up they will sit in the grass and they've set quite artificial deadlines of giving parents about two weeks to get it done and those admins have literally got their whole age groups done and their age groups are complete whereas I've got about 40 people done and I've got 20 people to go by just politely asking them on whatsapp so they've done it a bit differently second to that we um we will probably look to use the GMS for collecting subs at some point in the future. And right. that gives our parents an extra impetus. So we said, look, we not only do you have to do it for compliance reasons, but we need you set up and able to access it directly so that if we choose to use it for our sub system in the future, it will all work because obviously the club subs fund the rugby and that's a critical function. So we need you to do that as well. And then that's sort of, that's kind of slightly the stick element and the carrot part, we've tried to be quite compassionate to people who really struggled last year and we've been quite empathetic and we said, actually, we know that our rollout of this last year was a bit of a disaster and we had lots of data errors in our system that we didn't understand and we weren't able to help you very well. And actually this year is completely different. We've had loads of training. We have fixed almost everything RN that we could see that was causing issues. The RFU are now responding with incredible speed. So we had loads of login issues last year. People can get their accounts. This year, people are raising a ticket and within about two hours, they're saying, oh, so if I'm in my account, it's sorted. I've done it now. Wow. And we're really, really stressing to people that affiliation re affiliation this year is a very different kettle of fish to what it was last year in our experience and not talking about everybody, just as our club. Um, and that's actually partly why it's working so well because we've been like if you have any problems come back to your admin your admin will come back to me we will get it fixed really quickly whatever the issue is and we'll really really help you with that and I think that kind of combination has helped yeah. and then the last thing we've done is give people a bit of context so we've said look like, I've got quite three quite sporty boys who play lots of sport and they play football and I don't know exactly how it works for every club but I think if you're in any FA run league in the way we have our few numbers, they have what they call fan numbers, football association numbers. And not only do you have to enter those and do something quite similar, you actually have to provide a copy of your child's passport to register them, to prove their age and everything in order for them to play children's competitive football. Yeah, It's just their equivalent of what we're doing now. But in football, we're really used to doing it. I've had to do that every year since my oldest kids are 13, since they were like seven. And yeah. you're just used to doing it. I think the issue with this is it's like a once in a generation switch over. And people just aren't used to doing it. So this season and last season is going to be a little bit painful as so everyone gets used right. to that extra bit of legwork. But after that, it will just become the same as it is for football, the same as for any other sport. They'll just be yeah. used to it. They'll get it done in the 30 seconds that it should take because it will be set up in the future. It's just a question of plowing through the issues now. Yeah. And then once you've done that, everything going forward will be so much exponentially simpler. Great. So, so it sounds like... Um, you, it's quite a team effort. You've got each age group, someone in each age group. You called them an admin doing something as well. Yeah, so I don't know how the clubs are set up. I've only ever been involved with rugby at Farnham. So I apologise if what I'm saying maybe doesn't resonate with everybody. But we do have quite big age groups. It's about 60 kids in each age grade bracket. And then all the girls brackets got about 30 kids in as well. So that's quite a lot of people. So to start with, I when I raised some issues and stuff, I went and got a bit of a waterfall kind of dominoes effect of how we set it up to make it easy for parents. So to start with, I was really struggling and eventually, because we're right on the border of two counties, we're part two CBs. So someone from Hampshire CB, an amazing, amazing, amazing GMS trainer called Dave, uh, was offering to help train people. And he literally taught me inside out and back to front the entirety of the GMS. And I couldn't yeah. have then helped the rest of my club without that training because slight dyslexic written guides are not my thing I needed a human to sit down and do a zoom call and walk me through the system yeah. and as I got the gist of it he was also super helpful because we had so much historic data issues of where we're just misentered data and it was stopping the system working of helping me relink children insert relationships right. um remove duplicates then I removed all the people who should never have been there because they stopped playing many years ago and stuff 
So I then tidied up most of the data. Once it was all super tidied up and I knew how to use it, I then waterfalled that down and gave level three registrar access to all of the age grade admins. So for each of those groups of 60 or 30 children, they have their own admin who is responsible for running their age groups. So then they got level three access. So they could then see whether or not the people in their age group had affiliated. And if there was a problem, they could try and fix it themselves. And if there wasn't like, if they couldn't fix it, they then asked me if I could fix it. And if I can't fix it, we then ask parents to raise a ticket if it's something that's just beyond us, which is normally a login issue that we can't fix. Just about everything else we can fix. Normally we can fix ourselves. Um, and so then we had like a whole structure of people all helping each other and working together and a group of us who could all ask each other questions if anyone got stuck. Um, and then each of those admins, the way they know if their age group is affiliated or not, is that we use the form section and we run a form yeah. and then we can run the names of the kids and whether or not in that by using a data birth search, um, whether or not they've affiliated. And then they exactly yeah. know who to chase. So they can say, okay, these 40 kids have done it, but these 20 haven't. I've double checked. I cannot see any technical issues with their account where they wouldn't be able to affiliate. So I think it is just a question that they just haven't, and they just need to badger them a bit more to get them to do it. Right. Um, But it makes it really easy and efficient. It's not a guessing game. You're not individually checking names. You just run a form, and in 30 seconds, you know exactly who you still need to talk to to get it done. And it works really well. And then, as I said, if those parents are struggling, we just promise them loads of help. Like if they brought their phone over, would stand next and help them do it yeah that's great so from a support perspective you you're not on your own you've set up a, a group of people to to help and a bit of delegation as well and yeah. you're right Farnham you know Farnham's a big club isn't it with big numbers but of course that principle is scalable isn't it to a to a smaller club or a medium sized yeah. club as well and so. I'm sure all clubs must have way already pre-existing structures for managing the admin of their age groups for their festival and stuff so it must all be there already in some form yeah great that's good. So if you were to, for the, for the assembled group on the call tonight, if you were to, what, what would be your two sort of key takeaways? If you were to say to them, look, here's two things that in your experience you think are worth prioritising, what would they be? Sure. So I think my first one, literally the linchpin of being able to make everything work has been, um, and everyone will do it in a different way. Some people learn it off paper and stuff, but it's just to get someone in your club who is like properly fluent in how the GMS works. For me, I really needed a GMS trainer because I learn really auditarily like I hear things I process them much better but other people that might there's loads of help guides and stuff which I refer back to to prompt my memory but other people might just be able to learn it from that or from YouTube videos or whatever it is but you just need one person who deeply deeply understands the system and once you've got that you can then waterfall all that knowledge down but without it you've got an infinite number of unknown unknowns which might trip you up and cause you to get really frustrated and think oh it's just too hard and it's really dispiriting you just need that one bit of knowledge yeah um and and my second thing thing would just be to stay really positive because actually this is not a forever problem or a forever challenge for clubs it's a once in a generation switch from everyone running it on pen and paper to a slightly dodgy Excel spreadsheet, whatever people were using before, to actually a really comprehensive system that means you can check as an age group admin who's been DBS, who's done their head case courses, who's done their tackle safe, who's done their instruction safeguarding, whose DBS is about to run out. It gives you a level of transparency that actually, as a director of my club, so we've never had in quite the same way before. And if you use it for a subsystem, that's another level of kind of consolidation of everything in one place um it is it has got lots of capacity to be really useful it's just a lot of kind of teething pain getting everyone to use it but actually yeah. once you've cracked how to use it it's pretty simple so just keep going and don't give up with it right great thank you Sophia that that's been really helpful I hope that's helped people on the call as well with a bit of sort of real life examples as well um Obviously, you're doing a great job. So well, well done, Farnham. <laughs> I mean, the, num- the numbers are, are fantastic. But I think, you know, those three key areas, really, the promotion you're providing and the support you give to parents is, is great. So thanks ever so much. Thanks yeah, for, guys, for joining us. And uh, yes, I will now hand over to Chloe. who will talk a little bit about some of the, the improvements that we've made. Thanks, Sophia. Are you there, Chloe? Yes, sorry. Uh, <laughs> just struggling with technology there for a second. I couldn't unmute myself. 
Um, okay, so yes, yeah, so as uh, we've already talked about, the aid grade player affiliation seems to be working um, really, really well. We've had, as uh, Mark said, we've had uh, 22,000 um, player age grade player affiliations that's made up of just over about 18 19,000 uh renewals from the previous season and about just under 4,000 new age grade affiliations so bearing that in mind that the eight that the uh, player affiliation process is working and it's working really well um we've got no major changes to that um, process in this space for this season. We do, however, have um, a small collection of minor enhancements that we hopefully will improve user journeys for individuals logging onto GMS, um, interacting with their account, and also hopefully to reduce um, volunteer workload burden for club administrators. So what we've really been looking at is um, the user experience and the user interface. So where we can make a button bigger or larger or more prominent, um, we can. Also looking at reporting and dashboard updates to see if there's any missing reports um, that we can obviously um, put on for GMS for club administrators um, based on what they've wanted. Um, these areas that we focused on have been based on uh, feedback or suggestions that have come from the GMS help desk tickets where you log those. Um, also from the age grade user groups and the new user groups that we've now got set up um, and predominantly from Deloitte platform for rugby recommendations when they did their platform for rugby review they also gave us um, some recommendations that we could look at and we focused on ones that were no major changes and ones that we could essentially do on releases that would be sort of qu quite quick wins that would obviously help uh, again improve that user journey for individuals um, we have just done um, a few releases or deployments so we've done two uh, last month and we've also just done one today and we've got one due um, just next week. The reason being is we've promoted what we would like to do as a, a change freeze for August and September. So there's not going to be any major changes or releases or deployments during that time, um, apart from anything that is a essential critical bugs that may have come up. Um, because we realise obviously August and September is the lead up to the playing season and the start of the playing season. So we don't want to do any deployments during that time. Um, should you need any uh, notes on what has been deployed today or the last couple of release notes and in fact next week's release, um, they will be or they are posted on the help portal. So if you go um, to the help portal and look up under GMS for game management system and under latest release notes, all releases and deployments, they have uh, published a list of what was being included on there. Mark, if you can go to the next page. Thank you. So some of the key updates that we've done on these um, releases and deployments, these last three ones that we've done, again, no major changes there, but what we've done is um, updated the wording on the welcome text to assist new parents when creating an account. Um, and we've put on a new signpost and banner there. An example is on the screen. Um, hopefully, so um, to cut out some of those confusions where parents were affiliating themselves instead of um, children, which happened last year. Um, we've also done the changes to the girls' age band in teams as per the uh, regulations. We also have um, what we call a club email template available for clubs. So we hope this is really positive. So it's basically an editable um, template. Um, currently, it's found under the People Everyone grid. Um, and basically, you can use the filters on the People Everyone grid to really filter down to relevant aid groups. And then you can email this email template under email affiliation instructions. And it's got on there um, the links to the help portal and the videos straight there. So clubs can just edit those instructions and send out. So it saves you having to retype that for um, sending out to individuals or to parents who wish to renew or affiliate, you can edit it how you wish. Um, I'm not gonna go through everything that's on those deployments. Uh, we've got a few other examples here, such as um, you can now add second emergency contacts. There's also a new panel um, under player management that lists 
players with missing data such as medical conditions and emergency contact details so on the screen here the example here has 36 so ideally you'd reach out to those players contact them and obviously get those down to zero um, so that was a suggestion that came in um, from the user groups. Um, and also we've got um, a new feature is for 17 year olds who are able to play both age grade and adult. Um, they're now able to affiliate as both. So they, um, as per screenshot example, um, on the screen, you've got affiliate as a player for age grade, and then also in the green, uh, what's next box, they've also got affiliate as a player adult. So there's those options there. So we have really listened and taken on board a lot of feedback and suggestions from last season. And we've basically tried to implement them in time for the, the new season um, and before September, so that it really helps club administrators, um, as that's what we're essentially trying to work towards is obviously to reduce burden for you guys. And these are some of the suggestions that you guys have raised and um, we've implemented for you. Um, so just a reminder, we've got um, one more release next week. Those notes will again go on the help portal under latest release notes. And again, just reiterating what Mark and Ian have said that the help portal really does have, it has over about 100 um, guides for just GMS alone. Um, some of those, the most use, used ones and most viewed have videos with step-by-step -step guides. We always try to keep them updated and have updated them if there's been any slight changes to GMS mess the look or the feel um, but if you feel that any need modifying or editing or if we're missing any articles then feel free to log that on the help portal as a ticket and um, you know we can look forward to maybe posting that onto the portal if it's a valid article that's not there but that should be your first stop your one stop really for any guides um, any videos that you need um, for the age grade affiliation as well um, thank you, and I'll hand that back to, I think it's Ian now. Yep, cheers. Uh... Chloe. Um, so you would have seen this in uh, our community game update that we have uh, recruited uh, and have some GMS support trainers now, uh, which is really exciting. Um, it's something we uh, have not had before in place ever. Uh, so we've got a, a good group of people all from the game. Uh, all from clubs uh, like yourselves, uh, all uh, very keen uh, to support and have been onboarded with myself and the wider team uh, and, are, and are ready to be deployed to support uh, clubs across the game. And I'm going to explain, I've seen a couple of questions in the chat uh, asking, you know, how they're going to be deployed, how do we get one? And I'm going to explain that all to you now. So um, in terms of our deployment, it's uh, of these trainers, it's a limited uh, it is a limited group of people, as you can see, we've got nine, um, and we need to be careful uh, in managing uh, uh, their deployment and their support, but we want to get them out there as much as possible, all right? Um, but we're going to use do that using our data and insights that we hold internally. So we have our dashboards data around affiliation, which pulls data uh, from GMS. We have our reports provided from the service desk from tickets raised. Uh, and we also have our local intelligence from our local delivery teams on, on the ground who are provided feeding in insights as well. So a real coordinated approach to targeting clubs who need that support uh, where it's needed because we don't have infinite resource. So really exciting. Um, we, it's great that we've uh, we've got this uh, uh, in place, uh, but we'll be taking a really uh, targeted and data and insight led uh, approach to deploying these. And if Mark's just going to move the slide on for me, um, we will be focusing on two areas uh, to start with, uh, and that is age grade affiliation. And then what is GMS and how do I use it? Um, so it's two key focus areas for those support trainers, and they've been acquainted with the modules that have been uh, created to deliver uh, to the guys, and there'll be small focus sessions, and uh, primarily a lot of the del delivery will be online, but on a case by case basis, there will be some face to face um, sessions, but clearly where the support trainers are located, 
uh, etc all comes into play with, with that so we're, we have, we're really targeted with this for it, um, but we do have this resource to use and you'll see as we move forward uh, throughout uh, August and September um, they will be being deployed more and more and we actually ran our first session um, with some clubs in Cornwall on Monday so um, it'll be really good to get them out more Thank you. Uh, thanks, Mark, uh, on this slide. And I'm going to hand over to, uh, it will, I'll pick up any questions that, uh, that have been raised from that in the chat or at the end. But I'm going to hand over now to uh, Tom, who's just going to explain another exciting area that we have now just around our user groups that we've implemented off the back of uh, Deloitte recommendations earlier in the year. Yeah, good evening all. Yeah, as, as Ian's nicely set up there, um, as part of the, the platform for rugby recommendations, one of the core uh, aspects, one of the core attributes of, of, of their recommendations was around being more user-centric. Um, and one core way that we're going to do that is through the setup of our P4R, our platform for rugby user groups, which you can see there. So we, we split out into personas. So we've got a players group, a coaches and match officials group, team and match management, club management, CB and council. And of course, uh, uh, we also have an internal uh, staff group for the RFU. Um, and the, the, the whole point of these is, is to engender you know, direct two-way engagement with the game. So we can understand the challenges, we can test um, hypotheses and ideas that we, we've got about the direction that we're, we're, we're looking to take and the changes we're looking to make. So we can test those um, with uh, each of these groups to get their feedback, feed that into the, the development and the improvement of, of what we're looking to do around GMS and, and, and the wider ecosystem. Um, each group is made up of 12 volunteer um, users um, from those uh, personas. We also have uh, council members involved in, in all of them. So across the, across the board, we've got a, a great cross-section of, of, of the game um, of everybody involved. Um, over the course of the next 12 months, we will have uh, two much larger groups, which is, um, you know, uh, instead of 12, more like 100 users. And uh, this is where we're, we're getting close to um, delivering kind of a major um, update where we can properly uh, get, get a much larger test cell so we can understand um, how it fits, how it works. You know, really test it to death before we before we actually release it to the to the wider game. Um, working closely with um, comms and engagement colleagues like Ian, um, and working with the with my tech colleagues, Chloe and and, and Matt and, and and the wider group to make all this happen. So yeah, uh, hopefully that's just giving you a, a bit of a flavour of, of how things are changing and what we're what we're doing in that space. I think I'm handing back to. Mark? Yeah, no, no, thank you, Tom. Yeah, great. And Mark, if you can uh, stop uh, sharing the script, uh, sharing the presentation, that's great. Um, so, hope, yeah, a real good um, update across the board there. And I know there's been uh, lots of uh, questions coming in into the chat. Um, I believe a lot of them have been answered. So, if anyone does have a question, feel free to type now if you have a burning one now, or I'm quite happy with the size of the group, actually, if, if you want to put your hand up and I'll, I'll come to you now. If you have any. Yes. Okay. All quiet, yeah. All all quiet. Other everyone's than, thinking hard, I think. Everyone, everyone's thinking hard. Uh, all well, very warm. No, yeah, so, yeah. I've got a question. Sorry. Thanks. Sorry, I couldn't put my hand up. I just knew to unmute. Thanks, Sorry, Pam. Pam, Pam from West Park. Um, we've used GMS quite religiously for the last couple of years. So we use it for subs, registration, everything. Um, I, I guess just my quick question was, what? there's no major, major changes because I'm seeing this affiliation and thinking, oh, my God, what am I missing? 
there's not a big change, is there? Other than I think the only, the only thing we don't do is we try to, we do everything for the parents, whereas what we're trying to do is get them to register themselves. Yeah, there's no major changes this year, Pam, at all. So yeah. it's just enhancements, improvements based on the feedback from last year. Um, yeah. So you know, and obviously getting parents to do it for you to reduce the the workload on club administrators as well, and, and obviously parents being in charge of their their own records and their children's records so you know really that's that that's where it's no major change it may feel like a, a major change because actually we've never we've never um done any sort of comms and engagement on the scale that we are doing now and that's part of uh, uh the wider team's role and, and and my role uh is to really increase that comms engagement and, and listen to the clubs work with the clubs and and get ahead of the game and and hopefully um you know what you're saying there is it's feeling like oh what have i missed but actually that's because we're actually really um communicating and sharing lots of information around it uh, with you guys ahead of this ahead of the season and also giving you uh, more time uh, based on feedback from last year in order to to get ahead of that start of the season weekend you know when everyone's yeah. like oh rugby's back we've got to get back yeah. in goal. I w- that was sorry that was going to be my next question actually because um I know that that first couple of Sundays when we're back in the club and we're even parents are trying to um log on and register the kids again it, it, has there been any improvements to that so you know with with everybody logging because it it does sometimes crash doesn't it a little bit yeah so. Um, yeah, so we have actually spoken to FSI, who are our third party software supplier, um, and they put in just just um, just briefly just extra servers that should hopefully cope with that extra performance that comes in September when everyone starts logging on and especially around like when they start submitting match cards so we took the feedback from last year when that was all sort of happening and the performance issues and the slow speed so hopefully they've put some extra servers in in place that that should prevent that for this season so yes brilliant great stuff well thanks for your question Pam and uh, West Park Leeds. I played there. No, oh, West Park St Helens. Oh, West Park St Helens. Okay, yeah. good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> I, I did play a couple of games for West Park Leeds. So, um, oh, no, very good. <laughs> Cheers, Pam. Thanks for your question. Thank you. Um, any further questions from from anyone else? Uh, Colin, you got your hand up. Uh, you have to take yourself off mute, Colin. Uh, bottom left hand corner, mate. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Ian, can you explain to me why the IFU, when they're doing these Zoom meetings, persist in having the chat on the side? I might be getting old, but I can't concentrate on listening to somebody and trying to read the chat at the same time. Uh, it's your it choice. It confuses you... me, and I don't know if it confuses anybody else. Perhaps it's just me, but I'm just old. Uh, don't, don't worry, don't worry, Colin. Um, it's uh, good for engagement on the sessions, but you don't actually have to have the chat open if you don't don't want to. Uh, and you can move it around the screen. So probably worth just having a, a Google on Zoom uh, and, and just Googling, can I remove the Zoom chat or move it? And it'll show you what to do. Um, yeah. But yeah, but Ian, if I remove it, I don't see any of the questions. The questions uh, are quite interesting. But if I'm reading the questions, <laughs> that's, dialogues. That's, lots. that's good Good feedback. Yeah, and I appreciate it can be distracting, but it's also a good opportunity for people to, to ask questions as, as we go along, mate. All right. Okay. Thanks, Colin. Any uh, any further questions specifically on affiliation? Suzanne? Hi, good session as usual. So thank you very much for that. Um, I guess I would find it super helpful to just see the process of running those affiliation reports because I run a lot of reports, but I just haven't figured out how to run one that quickly shows me the affiliation status. And then just curious for other clubs' experience, um, I, I'm sorry, I can't remember the lady's name who spoke earlier, but how are you getting around the transmission of private data with updating your coaches on who has and who hasn't affiliated? Because we haven't cracked that one. Uh, is Mark or... Uh, Mark, do you want to take that one? Or Matt? 
I could probably take that in. So Suzanne, just sorry, I caught the, the, the sort of second half of your, your question there. Um, I think what you're asking is how are you managing the movement of data between coaches to, to properly crack the kind of reaffiliation component? Yeah, the is that... who has and who hasn't affiliated. Yeah, so the management of the permissions is is clearly sort of a club by club um, approach. Some um, some clubs decide to provide the level three permission um, to all of their their team managers, who can then go in to their age group, um, select uh, the, the the all club players list, and then um, review the status of those individuals as to whether they've affiliated or not, and then determine whether they want to chase uh, on a sort of team by team approach. Uh, alternatively, as the club administrator, you may want to uh, keep that uh, closer to, to one or two people um, and then review that from the player management um, module as well. So we've got some guides online to do that. So um, so Chloe can probably put those in the, the chat and, and highlight that so that um, so you can follow whichever approach you sort of see, um, see that best fits. In terms of who has access to the data, that's managed by our permission structure. So that's down to, to the club to determine who's, um, who's responsible for what um, at their organisation. So the first part of the question was the running of the, the, the quickest way to run the reports without having to go age group by age group. Um, and the, the, the permission structure, I'll, I'll raise a separate, maybe by a user group. But in our view, the, the data to which the team managers would be privy, it's, it's too much. Um, if actually what we're looking for is, you know, little Johnny affiliated, yes or no. There isn't a permission level in our view that is sufficiently restricted to little Johnny affiliated, yes or no, because that's all, with, all that's all those coaches need to know. Perhaps whether they've got a medical inhaler, but um, the permission levels are too expansive. But okay, I, so is that we can. Yeah, we can we can set, certainly review that as part of the the user group structure, definitely, and um, we'll, we'll take all that um, that feedback on board. There's various ways that you can go and share that information um, by sort of slicing and dicing with the the data that's available via the, the player management um, module. But I think um, Chloe's put some um, some information there in the chat. So definitely via that player management module is the way that you've got a more holistic view versus the team by team view. Um, thank you. Thanks, Matt. Thanks. Thanks for that. Um, Abby, I, I believe uh, you have a, your hand up, uh, but I think your question might have been answered in the chat, but go for it. Um, not quite. I'm, I mean, I, I, I'm sorry if this question is really naive. I'm new to working on memberships um, for, for the club this year. Now, Nottingham Casuals uses Pitch Hero for most things, and I'm my hesitation is if we're already getting parents to do, it's hard enough to get them to do Pitch Hero. Are we now asking them to do Pitch Hero and GMS on top? Or is there a way of, if they've done one, it will automatically do the other? Because I don't see how we're going to get parents to go through that rigmarole twice, unless I'm missing something. Uh, I'll let Mark come in, come in on this and he'll just explain a, a bit of the, the history of affiliation as well. Yeah, so so Abby, the the, the easy answer is they they aren't linked. Um, as we've put in the chat, there's some, some work underway now to look at how does GMS link to some of those third party providers, um, because there are others aren't there as well as Pichero, you've got Spond, etc. as well. Um, and that data sharing would make things much easier, you're right, for parents, so they just do it once. Um, as things stand at the moment, that isn't the case, though. So, um, and as we said earlier on, you know, the regulation is to do that on GMS. Um, so at the moment, they, they would need to do it twice. Now, what we need to try and do is obviously work and help clubs to find the best way to do that. Um, because when, as Sophia talked about earlier, sort of that, that one off um, data set profile for each player, parent, et cetera, they, they take that forward throughout the game. So into their adult playing as well. And we've answered some questions in the chat about 17-year-olds who play adult rugby. That's the same data for whether they're playing junior or adult as well. Um, so, so, yeah, the easy answer is they aren't linked, but we are looking at how might we be able to do that in future and working with FSI as the, the third-party provider to do that. So, so for this season, we're going to have to get parents to do Pitch Hero and GMS? If, if, you, if you as a club are choosing to to use Pitch Hero, 
then they, they would need to do both, yes, because the GMS is the regulated one. Uh, Picturo isn't, isn't regulation to do that. Okay. Does that make sense? It does. It's just I just don't know how we're going to get parents to do to, to do the, to do that twice. That's just my my concern. Yeah. Might be good if anyone uh, other clubs on the call can pop in the chat uh, what they do because I know there's a, a few here and here who use different uh, systems at the moment. But it might be good to share some good practice with Abby as she's uh, new to it um, uh, and go from there. Cool. Thanks for your question, Abby, and thanks for thanks for being uh, proactive in the, in the area of GMS uh, and and then trying to understand it as a new volunteer. So well done. Any more questions? Brilliant. Okay, um, I think that's covered off uh, most things. Um, and I will close the session there now, just double checking there wasn't any uh, last minute questions firing in. Um, so no, really good. Thank you for attending. This session has been recorded. It will go up on the RFU Club Support YouTube channel. And on there, there is a GMS playlist. And on that playlist is all the webinars that we've run since the autumn last year through to this summer webinar series. We've got a couple more happening in August, one, a second one on electronic match card and a third one, uh, a second, uh, yeah, third one on age grade affiliation. So the next age grade affiliation update and progress uh, session will be on the 31st of August. So if you if you want to come and attend that or you want some other people from your club to come or you think uh, they should they should see it, please signpost them to this uh, people at your club uh, to the, the support that's out there. You'll also find on that GMS playlist some really handy videos which are also on the help portal. Uh, I really encourage you to uh, get your parents to look at the, the articles on the help portal that will take them step by step uh, of exactly what they need to uh, to do uh, and we do uh, we did have some feedback in um, just around having a, a mobile version um, of the of the video um, for parents uh, as that would be quite useful that will be coming soon so um, as soon as that's out that will go on the uh, help portal and the YouTube channel as well so um, that will be coming soon and uh, thanks for attending have a good evening um, keep uh, affiliating uh, your players encouraging parents to to get uh, their players affiliated ahead of the start of the season and and um, uh, and and through throughout that first period of the season and I look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks for attending.